for the time being, this response from the responsible officer and Andrew Travers, uh, if you'd like to take a seat and come and leave. Mr. Travers. Thank you very much, Chairman. The, um, the one, the one mile it um, program, um, as, as set out in the cover report, has uh, its genesis originally in 2008. Um, so it has been uh, considered as council policy uh, from that point uh, and in numerous uh, occasions since then. Um, if, I, if I just sum up um, some of the challenges uh, that are recognised uh, in, in that programme and, and the response, uh, then, then maybe that will give a flavour of, of why uh, the programme exists as it does today. Firstly, um, the programme, it, I, I think, recognises uh, period of exceptional challenge for public services and for local authorities. Um, so we know that uh, we are in a period of extreme austerity. Uh, I think we can probably anticipate that that will continue for a number of years. Um, one of the consequences of that is the council's uh, support uh, from central government financially is likely to decrease by somewhere between 30 and 50 percent. Um, this level of reduction clearly is, is unprecedented. Um, coupled with that, um, we know that Barnet is a growing uh, and changing place. Uh, population growth uh, is rapid, uh, has been over the last 10 years and will continue for at least the next 10 years. Uh, and also, the expectations of citizens for public services are increasing. Um, expectations uh, for the way in which the council and tailor its services to the residents uh, is, is, a, is a clear uh, and important factor. So, so for those reasons of context, the council has, I think, recognised that it needs to think quite carefully about how it responds. It's an unprecedented challenge uh, and, and um, needs a carefully thought through response. But also, I think, uh, given the nature of the challenge, needed to think quite radically about how council services can be brought in that context. And I think that is a clear context for the programme that has informed member uh, decision making uh, about it. Um, in terms of the implementation of the programme, um, the way in which the, it has been taken forward is, is to effectively consider service areas on a case-by-case -case basis against that background uh, and against the three uh, objectives of the program, uh, which are around a new relationship with citizens, a one public sector approach, and a relentless drive for efficiency. Um, so, taking service areas on a case by case basis, as I've said, uh, to, con to consider options for future delivery against that context and agenda, uh, and then to select uh, a preferred option for delivery and then to implement that preferred option. Uh, and as, as was said earlier, there are some projects which have been already implemented and some are still in the process of being implemented. Um, taking the programme uh, as a whole, um, we try to track uh, both the financial and non-financial benefits of the projects within the programme. Um, as they stand, the financial benefits uh, over a 10 year period are anticipated to be about 100 million. Pounds. There are there are 115 non-financial benefits which are tracked within the programme, which give effect to the wider uh, aspirations of uh, driven by the three objectives that I've referred to. Um, <coughs> Council uh, has recognised, and, and, and officers have recognised that this is a very challenging programme to deliver. Change of this nature uh, is clearly always difficult. Um, the, the, the number of different delivery uh, approaches within the program uh, are such that we need to make sure we manage the risk of delivery very carefully. Um, yeah. the, way which, which is, really? the way in which we sought to do that is to try and make sure that the council increases its capacity within its core workforce uh, to manage program of this nature effectively, um, but has also supplemented 
that with the right external expertise in respect to commercial, contractual, and legal matters. So in that way, we try and make sure that we, we deliver the program safely and effectively. We protect continuity of services for residents now and through the change process. I just did to, 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 um, to finish, Chairman, I think worth noting that um, that there are a number of approaches being taken in the, in the one by program to as to how services should be delivered. There are clearly a wide range of services that are uh, delivered at the moment in-house. Uh, there are some services which are being delivered through a shared service, for example, the digital service with Paro. There are some services delivered via the Barnet Group, arms <coughs> company, and there are some services which it's planned to deliver through that.